Hi, this is your host Supreme Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Prasad Durbala, co-founder and CPO of Avesha. Prasad, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, thank you very much, Sapneo. Thank you. Yeah, today we are going to talk about uh, uh, Cube Slice, uh, which you know you're open sourcing. But before we talk about this specific project, I would love to know a bit about the company itself since you're a co-founder. So tell me, um, what is it all about? What problem you, are, you saw in the space that you wanted to solve, which led to the creation of this company? Sure. Uh, yeah, what, what we have seen, we have been uh, working uh, together uh, many years in, on Kubernetes in different uh, SaaS platforms. Kubernetes uh, is very good at orchestrating uh, clusters uh, and workloads, but you know when it comes to the teams and how to have freedom for the teams to uh, have their own tenancy, it is a little weak. Uh, and uh, tenancy is not the first class citizen in Kubernetes. So we always used to have challenges with adding capacity or giving them control because security was always uh, uh, a bigger uh, burden on, uh, um, you know, from a SaaS perspective, when you have to do SOC 2 compliance and other things, you would want to have, uh, you know, proper guardrails. But on the other hand, teams also need to be focused on their velocity uh, of deploying things at, at a much uh, higher pace because uh, with microservices, a lot of teams used to deploy multiple uh, deployments per day. And then having to have that kind of a framework, but also giving capacity was a bigger challenge. And observability is another factor which we always used to run into. So learning from all the lessons which we have seen, we wanted to create a platform for enterprises to use multi-tenancy inside Kubernetes, not only in a single cluster, but also extend that across multi-cluster. As a SaaS provider, people used to deploy it at different locations, but have to have the same kind of constructs across. That is what we kind of felt that it is must needed a solution to have tenancy inside a cluster and extend it to a multi-cluster. Why, first of all, multi-tenancy is kind of hard to achieve in, in, in Kubernetes infrastructure? And then um, how we are trying to address this by, of course, bringing in cube slice there? As you are aware, there are different things which are necessary for cluster resources. And there are different things which are namespace scoped resources. So Kubernetes cluster is always focused around, you know, essentially in a single enterprise, uh, uh, so there are lots of things with respect to cluster resources, which like if you have a custom resource definition, that, that is only in the cluster resources. So API server uh, is common to entire cluster. So how do you shard an API server? How do you define isolation? Right, Namespace gives you an isolation, but does every team need to have a single namespace or do we have to have multiple namespaces for a team? And a team wants to deploy in different location with edge providers coming up. And as a SaaS provider, you want to have workloads closer to the customer. And so now that is essentially becoming either multi-cluster or multi-cloud, right? So how do we make sure that, that, that there is consistency? Not only consistency, there is security guardrails and as well as resource management with a, a control plane, which is common across, that is what uh, the problem which we were tackling with in Cube Slice. Uh, talk about uh, the open source aspect of it. First of all, why you're open sourcing it? And second is that what are the core components or raw components of this project? Yeah, no, it certainly, look, Kubernetes is an open source, right? Everybody, developers, it's a product-led growth, right? Uh, developers would want to have the freedom to see what they are deploying, right? So it is not something, it's an old way of top-down sales. It is more about, you know, uh, uh, adoption. Developers would feel much more closer to them uh, for if they know what is going inside the production. At the end of the day, they are the ones who are managing those things. So having to have that openness is important for them to understand to deploy it. But when 
something goes wrong, they need to know how to fix it, right? Healing is very important for them because the service availability is fundamental to any SaaS provider. So that's the reason why we think it is important to give uh, the community to have an openness and then build use cases by the community so that community has freedom to say, how do, uh, how do they define their uh, specific use case? That's the reason why we have decided to open source it. And what we call it open core, there are functionalities like multi-cluster connectivity, uh, na same nameness across multi-cluster, resource allocation across multi-cluster, so we call it slice. Slice is a way of segmenting cluster and extending that cluster across multi-cluster, whether it is multi-cloud or whether it is edge or a hybrid scenario where you have a cluster inside uh, your data center. That is what we are open sourcing it. With typical open source project, there is of course, as you mentioned, this open core project where folks can go and check it out, play with it. But there's also a commercial angle to it. Without commercialization, open source will not succeed. So also talk about how is Avesha either leveraging this open source project or you know, how are you bringing it to those folks who do want to leverage it, but they may not have resources to invest in the open source project? No, certainly a very good point for now. Uh, you know, Kubernetes as, as much as we all love it. The talent pool is very star. I mean, very sketchy in the sense like there is not enough talent pool, right? So what we are trying to do is give an open source, but we will wrap around the service angle to it if they want to have maintaining uh, and they have some uh, use cases which they want us to quickly, uh, uh, you know, inculcate or insight into the upstream community. That is what we were going to do. And beyond that. There are a lot of usability features we are actually putting, wrapping around uh, the open source, essentially like AI capabilities, right? And the network capabilities. The network which we are offering as an overlay across multi-cluster is layer three and above, right? So now uh, there are traditional workloads still, right? Uh, so uh, Kubert is a fantastic project where people are taking uh, the VMs and then putting into Kubernetes. Now, Kubeword uh, uh, workloads are not HTTP centric, but you want to have to, that connection from a non-HTTP centric workload to a, 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 you know something which is modernized mic microservices. How do we bring that? That is the kind of foundation which we are building from a network standpoint for a multi-cluster. When we uh, talk about multi-cluster, it's not just as you're talking about, you know, we are looking at edge data. So not only is it spreading out, it's, those, those clusters are also getting uh, bigger and bigger. So uh, uh, how do you look at it as a challenge from operational efficiency? Uh, what kind of, once again, challenge poses for developers or DevOps team? And then, you know, how either Avesha or, you know, Coop Slice try to address that problem? Yeah, fundamentally, uh, when uh, Kubernetes came about, you know, uh, tenancy in their mind was only a single namespace, right? A single namespace is not sufficient for a team, right? Uh, so you have to have multiple namespaces. And then uh, uh, together, they need to also connect uh, different edge providers. And so teams were used to say, oh, I need a cluster. So the cluster sprawl became a bigger challenge. So and as you can see, 1.24 uh, has 5,000 uh, nodes and 150,000 uh, pods which you can have. So consolidate, when you're operating, you need to have tools which are essentially you know, visibility tools, security tools, uh, you know, logging and all that stuff. So the more you have sprawl, each one of them would cost a lot more. And then your scheduler is not going to be, uh, there are lots of resources which are going to get wasted if your boundary is only the cluster. So given the fact that there is a lot of advances in 1.24 to have large clusters, you can literally shard the clusters by tenancy and then consolidate all the tooling so that you have consistency and as well as cost saving and then your scheduler is going to get much better because you can uh, do a bin packing much easier uh, because the resource pool is pretty much. 
we also have offer a, a per tenancy, you know, isolation of a node and different things. So let's say if I have a GPU node and I want only certain set of namespaces to use the GPU node, you can create a slice and then assign that GPU node to those set of namespaces and so that, you know, uh, a web-centric uh, uh, work workload is not running on a GPU node, right? So th those kind of fundamental operational efficient way of running an uh, 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 you know infrastructure is what we're bringing to the cube slice. You talked about cost, and you also talk about security because these are also kind of challenges that teams face. Uh, cost is big, security cannot be compromised. So what is your approach toward these two to make a fine balance? Uh, because security can also have impact of efficiency and performance, it can slow things down, and of course cost is there. No, uh, no certainly. Uh, one, one way efficiency can be maintained is, you know, the control plane is satisfying uh, a whole bunch of nodes, right? So why do you want to have multiple, uh, you know, uh, clusters. It is not multiple as in there are people who are actually having 40, 50 clusters. One of the customer we are talking about, they, they have many, many data centers, large, large bank, and then they have lots and lots of clusters. And then they, when they group the nodes, the business unit, which is using that no, set of nodes may not consume all the things. So just they are over provisioning the nodes just for the sake of capacity. Right. If they can combine them into a virtual cluster, then they can use the nodes which are shared across multiple uh, business units with the guardrail of security. Right. Security is paramount because if uh, you know back in the days of networking, we are all bellheads uh, who have worked in uh, you know uh, networking uh, all over. There is a, a concept of micro segmentation. Uh, that micro segmentation is something which you would want to have. This is like antithesis is from a, a Kubernetes standpoint. The network is a flat network inside uh, Kubernetes, right? So how do you get that micro segmentation or a segmentation so that your surface uh, attack surface is reduced, right? So that once you have an attack surface reduced, then that's, uh, uh, you know, attack vectors are kind of controlled in whether it is uh, internal threats or an external threats. Uh, they, they are all going to be, uh, or, uh, you know, supply chain uh, challenges because they're, everybody is actually taking third party containers embedded into them and then creating it, right? So even though there are the whole slew of things from a scanning point of view, but at the runtime, there is not many things which are available. So what we are trying to do at the runtime is to put some guardrails to be able to figure out what are, how do we secure it. And one fundamental thing of tenancy and isolation is about reducing the attack surface, right? So that is what we are trying to bring from a security perspective uh, at the runtime and then a deployment time. Right. And you gave example of banks and other institutions. If I may ask you, uh, what kind of used cases you have seen, what kind of customers are there who are leveraging it? That would be great. So many, uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, interesting. There are lots and lots of uh, 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 customers who are kind of interested in, you know, how do I distribute the workloads closer to the customer, right? Which is the QOE aspect, quality of experience from a customer standpoint, because I'm a SaaS provider. I have my uh, retail uh, customers who are uh, closer to uh, in different things. You know, back in the day, we have already done a lot of analysis. You know, if the, the web is slow, your shopping cart is, you abandon the shopping cart faster, right? So if you want to have a workload closer to them, right, you, you have, uh, you've already modernized your workloads to be microservices. How do you deploy the workload closer to them? How do you disaggregate them, right? So you don't want to have full stack closer to the customer because there is not enough capacity there. The hyperscalers did a fantastic job of scaling up and all that stuff. So you have a small quanta of workload sitting closer to you as a, as a, a retail customer. And then having that uh, you know, connect to hyperscalers, that's one use case where a retail industry is benefiting out of it, right? Uh, now, uh, there are, you know, east-west traffic is increasing quite a bit. East-west traffic 
is what you have multi-cluster scenarios where you want to have proper guardrails from a security standpoint. Uh, the banks uh, and are interested in that east-west traffic to be provided uh, across multi-cluster. So those are all the uh, you know use cases we are seeing. Uh, so Swapna. Prasad, thank you so much for taking time out today. And not only talk about Avesha Kubeless Slice project, but also share some of the challenges that are there for you know developers, DevOps team space in the ecosystem. Thanks for sharing those insights. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Swapna. I would love to kind of catch up sometime. Uh, I am actually in Austin. If you are interested, uh, we should meet up there.